everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about creating value in your artwork. As you can see in this watercolor painting that I have here, I just want to point out kind of the difference in dark to light. And that's what value is, is the degree of dark to light. As you can see here up in the sky, there's a nice light shade of blue. And then they went in and kind of created a ridge line. That ridge line gets a little bit of a darker shade of blue. The closer you get to the viewer, we have almost this mid range of, of blues in here. And then as again, we move a little bit closer and sort of in this tree mountain line, uh, range line right here, we have a nice deep dark blue mixed with a little, uh, with a little black um, to give us a nice rich blue. So as you can kind of see that the closer we get here to the middle, to the mid range of the paper, so we're not really focused on the foreground right now, kind of in this um, in the middle ground here um, and in the background you have a nice range of values um, from uh, starting from the light in the in work in the background working closer 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 into the foreground to give you that nice rich um, you know sense of values there so that's a great way to create some depth in your artwork so we're going to do a couple quick exercises here I'm going to move that right out of the way and uh, I'm gonna, let's see, uh, start with a nice flat brush here and we're gonna work on a quick value exercise. And I would like you to do this too. So I'm gonna um, you know, get my brush wet here and uh, I'm gonna you know, start um, by making a nice, a nice pool of, I'm just gonna use the red here, I guess. Uh, so I'm gonna add a lot, you know, a lot of water to this and get it, um, get it nice and rich. And like we talked about, uh, like you just saw in the um, in the video that we just watched, um, you uh, in the uh, painting, sorry, that we just looked at, you could see that kind of that nice that nice range. So I'm going to look right here, and um, just as I've added, you know, um, some water to my paper and uh, um, and put that red down there. Now I'm going to um, scoop out some more and mix it into my pile, and I'm going to you know make another set here. And again, I'm going to work back in, uh, scoop out some more, and make another set right here. And kind of, as you can see, the more pigment I'm adding to the water, you know, the darker range of values that I'm going to get. So I can keep going, and I'm going to add in, again, a little bit more. And you can really see this start to increase here as I, as I move along. It's getting it's getting darker each time, um, with you know um, the kind of the more pigment is getting added, and as as we go through each time, and that's just one thing to keep in mind uh, that you want to be able to really see that range of values, but starting light first and going to dark is kind of the best way to do it, rather than um, trying to lift it afterwards. If you start dark and then try to work your way light, you're trying to um, kind of lift that paint out each time instead of adding the pigment in each time. So this is just a quick little exercise I want you to try. Of course I could keep going. I could get it much darker and in the same note I you know I could have um, started a lot lighter than when I started too. But just to kind of do a quick little scale to give yourself a nice frame of reference before you're starting a painting of the different um, the different values that you might want to achieve. And it kind of helps you to make sure that you have a you know a a wide variety to choose from and so that your artwork is looking really nice. Um, so I went in here before we start this, you know, the exercise um, and I just did a quick drawing and I'm going to uh, take this down, um, down to our, down to our surface again, like so that, you know, we can prevent that buckling. So I'm just going to, you know, take this down. And uh, we're gonna just create a little a value a little value exercise here with um, this buildings that I have. So again, uh, start like as we talked about in a previous video, you want to start uh, with you know with a light sketch, not too dark. Um, and I'm going to just kind of clean out my palette here and. Uh, and start going. So we're going to do what, right now a, um, what's called a monochromatic piece of artwork, and that means that you're going to be working all in roughly one one tone. Um, 
So I'm gonna I'm gonna mix a color here. I think uh, you know we'll add a little bit of this ultramarine blue, and um, we'll uh, mix it with a little bit of the burnt sienna. That kind of can create like a nice a nice value of grays there, and um, get that pretty watery and light. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna cover my whole surface like we've done like we've done before. And filling this in. When you're working monochromatically, of course, uh, and you're and you're really working to reach those those range of, of values, you're gonna have to be patient and, and let your artwork dry. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of go over my whole paper with that tone. And of course here, like I talked about, you have to be patient and let it dry, but for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just gonna hit it here with the uh, with the hair dryer. along for us. That should be sufficient. So I'm um, going to start working, like I said, on those values. And let's see, I'm going to um, mix up some more of that of that color there I talked about with the um, ultramarine blue and, and the sienna. I just like, it kind of uh, gives you like a nice nice shade of gray to work with there. Um, and on this particular part, I'm just going to look at where I have the lines drawn to my buildings. And I'm just gonna go in and kind of follow those lines um, straight across so that and go, you know, just kind of go right across the paper here. And you can already see that that's starting to, you know, increase the value from what we from what we just did in the in the background there. So again, I'm just gonna hit this with the hair dryer to speed it along. When working with values, it's really important to be able to kind of, you know, like I said, you know, you be able to be patient because you have to let it dry in between every time, which is why we're using, why we're using that hair dryer here to, to speed it up for us. Um, but I'm going to add a little bit of a different shade of, you know, shade of brown. I was using the Sienna earlier and this is, this is the Umber. I'm just going to, you know, use that as a little bit. Uh, a little bit of a color to change to change the value. I'm going to use a, a smaller brush here in this particular exercise, but um, and this this section of it. But again, you can kind of see I'm going to use the same the same colors. I'm going in to to grab that sienna, making it a little bit darker. And then if I if I need to, you know, I'll um, I'll use the umber. But this would be a great place now for me to be able to go in and again I'm going to follow these lines that I already have laid out here um, and I just want to kind of cover over this this whole section of the building here so I'm just going to focus on this one building right now and uh, and I'm just going to actually go right over it here and follow the line down and and really just work with uh, this one section of the building that I'm focused in on here. And again, it's just gonna kind of cover over that, that nicely here as that starts to dry. And then I really wanna look at, um, you know, getting a, like another shade in. So because this part's already dry, I can probably go right over here. Um, and like I said, I'm gonna introduce this other, the um, umber now, uh, but you can, and because this is dry, I can probably be really careful about sneaking right up in there next to that edge and just, you know, washing down. I grab some more paint on my brush and you can just kind of see I'm filling in this next area here. I don't want to go too close. Um, you know, 
but we're really starting to, you know, again, you can kind of start to see where where the values are. Um, we have some, your our lightest tone that we put in the back, then we went to the middle tone, uh, to you know, a little bit darker, adding in, you know, another middle tone here. Um, and I, I think it's just great to be able to really, and we're going to go down here, to kind of keep that same color palette, but each time, you know, the value just gets increased a, just a little bit. Um, you know, you'll be able uh, to do your project this week uh, in, in creating value. You'll find uh, your own subject matter that's super interesting. And maybe you, you know, are not uh, as much into the architecture. Maybe yours, you know, is, uh, you know, some people like to do a lot of floral work. Uh, one thing that it really does is work to do is, get, like I said earlier, is kind of create that sense of depth that you're looking for, the contrast in the colors. Uh, and again, I would, you know, um, before, you know, I would finish this up, I need, you know, would um, hit this with the dryer again or let it dry. But I can kind of keep building on, those same tones that we talked about um you know again like we said with those with the blues and the umbers you can see that um in my palette that it's really starting to pick up you know i can get a much a deeper tone so that might be the kind of thing where i you know i really want to get this um my you know the ground in here nice and rich um and really start to show uh, that sense and you, and you can kind of see that we're really now starting to get exactly create that depth that we talked about you can see where the ground is you can see um, where it starts to change dimension in the buildings and um, you know and you'll be able to do the same with a lot of patience and um, if you don't have patience like I do you can use the blow dryer so I'd be happy to see what you turn out for your value project and um, and good luck.